All right, so when a blood vessel gets damaged, it gets repaired in two steps, primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis, also known as platelet plug formation, is the first step. And what happens is a very weak platelet plug is formed. In secondary hemostasis, this platelet plug is stabilized. But in this video, we're gonna focus on primary hemostasis. So let's explain what happens in a really fun way. Here we have a blood vessel, and we see the various layers of the blood vessel. Imagine someone takes a knife and cuts this blood vessel. Of course, blood would leak out. So we need to repair this damaged blood vessel. How does this happen? Well, let's explain. The first thing that happens is that there's a transient vasoconstriction. This vasoconstriction happens because of two things. One, because of neural stimulation. The neuron tells the blood vessel to constrict. And the other thing is that endothelin is released from the damaged endothelial cells. And the endothelin tells the blood vessel to constrict. Why this vasoconstriction happens is interesting. There are different theories about it. One could be that the vasoconstriction kind of stops blood from coming to this damaged site. Okay, next step. Von Willebrand factor comes along and it binds to the collagen at the damaged site. This begins the process of clot formation. And just to remind us that we're talking about Von Willebrand factor, I put a picture of Will Smith over here on the W for Willebrand. By the way, a deficiency in this Von Willebrand factor is known as Von Willebrand disease. Now, the platelet takes its GP1B to attach to Von Willebrand factor. So to represent GP1B, we have this Jeep with 1B. The Jeep with 1B is going to remind us of GP1B. This allows the platelet to come along and attach to Von Willebrand factor. And by the way, where does Von Willebrand factor come from? It comes from the Weibel Pilati bodies of the endothelial cells. That's why I have this wobbly looking body over here to remind us of the Weibel Pilati bodies that Von Willebrand factor comes from. Okay, now that the platelets have bound through their GP1B receptor, the platelets undergo a conformational change. The next thing that happens is that the platelets release ADP and calcium and thromboxin A2. We have ADP over here represented by the add sign to remind us of ADP. And thromboxin A2 represented by the trombone with the A shoe. Thromboxin A2 is important for further platelet aggregation. We're gonna focus over here on ADP because ADP induces platelets to express another molecule, GP2B3A. GP2B3A is going to be important for other platelets to bind. It's represented by the Jeep over here with the two Bs in it. Jeep with two Bs for GP2B. The Jeep with a two B reminds us of GP2B. Again, this allows other platelets to bind through their GP2B receptors. And we have the F molecule over here representing fibrinogen, because it is fibrinogen which attaches the GP2B3A molecules together. And by the way, what's a deficiency in GP2B3A called? That's called glandman thrombosthenia. Okay, so that's basically it for platelet plug formation. After this, we again, we have secondary hemostasis where the platelet plug is stabilized, and we'll get to that in another video. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. Take care.